I think that the, the idea for a book starts like a seed inside that I don't even know that I have it, but slowly it starts to grow. Um, and then I start feeling the book that is usually a time and a place, something that will happen or is happening or has happened in a time and a place. And once I have determined that, I research the time and the place. And from the research, a lot comes. Because I may, if I decide to write about the gold rush, I know nothing about the gold rush until I start researching. And then I discover the most incredible things. And then all this material is like my, my raw material with which I will work. On January 8th, every year, I sit down to work a new book, a new project. And I have done my research. Usually the research takes years. I may be writing another book and researching for, some, for this idea that I don't know when I'm going to write. And, uh, and then I go to the research, which is more or less organized, but I don't have a story. I don't have characters. I don't know how it's going to end or why I'm writing it. And in the slow process, in the slow exercise of daily writing, something happens, the story begins to unfold. I believe there is inspiration. Inspiration is like, like a jolt of something that almost forces you to, to tackle a theme or a character or something. And, and it's so powerful that, that you can't resist it. That's the muse, but the rest is work. The, the, the discipline of sitting down eight hours a day in front of the computer, that's discipline. And no matter how powerful the muse is, if you do not have the discipline, it doesn't happen, unless you're a poet. A poet can, can, can have the muse sitting next to him in the bus, and he or she is capable of producing a great work of art. But it's not the case with, with a novel. A novel is a, is, is a very patient pursuit. And uh, I need the muse for the beginning. And then I need the muse to, to feel her in the air, accompanying me in the process. But I know that the rest is work. A lot of research, a lot of sitting down there and correcting and rewriting. I think that um, writers can be made, I mean, people can be taught to write beautifully. But you cannot be told you cannot be taught to tell a story. Some, everybody can d sing, but few people have an extraordinary voice. And I think that the times that I've been teaching writing, I have 20 students that are working on a novel. Maybe one will create a good novel. And they all write beautifully. They know how to write. And I can teach them a few things about the writing. But I cannot teach them suspense, tension, tone, what to withhold and when to give it, if you are going to give it to the reader. How to play with the imagination of, re of the reader. What is the highlight of the story? Sometimes what you omit is much more important than what you write. And, and that is so important. So it's, it's, in a way, it's a dance. So you can, everybody can, can dance, but dance beautifully, not everybody can. When I was young and, and I had started writing, I always had the feeling that the book was a gift. That it, it was something that was happening in spite of me. That, that some magic thing had happened and I had this apple on my desk that was the book. Now I trust myself more. Before, I always had the, the feeling that it was not going to happen again. Now I know that if I sit there on January 8th, by January 20th, I will have something.